Hello, my name is Tolga Tukur, and I'm going to tell you about an exciting new study that we did at UC Berkeley together with my colleagues Shinji Nishimoto, Alex Huth, and Jack Gallant. In everyday life, you might often find yourself searching through your environment and looking for specific categories of objects. For example, while navigating through the streets of a city, you might be wandering around and looking for buildings or cars. And someone who has just lost their pet might be looking around for an animal. Although this process of finding target objects seems and feels effortless to us, it is indeed a very challenging task. Visual scenes in the real world can contain many distinct types of objects that appear all at once. These objects might appear at different locations, they can have different sizes, shapes, colors, and some objects might even occlude others. Despite the complicated structure of real-world scenes, however, Humans can search for and easily identify thousands of distinct object and action categories that appear in their environment. Because this is such a large number, it seems unlikely that there are separate brain regions devoted to recognizing each and every one of these categories. So how does the human brain solve this very challenging problem then? Well, one effective strategy would be to devote the brain resources to selectively process the category we are looking for at that very moment. And when you need to look for a different category, the brain resources could be reallocated to process the new target instead. However, at this point, we have no idea if there are any brain regions that can dynamically change the categories that they process, and if so, how flexible such regions would be. To answer these questions, we place five human subjects in an MRI machine. We showed the subjects one hour of natural movie trailers where we had labeled distinct objects and actions that appeared in each second of the movies. We had our subjects perform two separate tasks while watching these movies. In the first task, they had to search for people and hold down a button when they detected a person in the movies. In the other task, they did the exact same thing but this time with vehicles. We simultaneously recorded brain activity using functional MRI. Functional MRI measures changes in blood flow in small rectangular areas called volumetric pixels. These voxels were 2 by 2 by 4 mm in size, and we recorded data from about 50,000 voxels that were near the cerebral cortex. The next step was to determine how each category of object or action affected the activity in each voxel. We measured such correlations using regularized regression analysis. This analysis gives us a model that tells us how each voxel responds to each of the 935 categories of objects and actions that we labeled in the movies. To help interpret and visualize these high-dimensional models, we constructed a specialized color map. The data used for this purpose was collected separately while subjects watch a different set of movie trailers. In this case, however, the subjects did not perform any visual search task, instead they only passively viewed the movies. Here we are visualizing this color map using a graphical structure taken from WordNet, which is a hand-constructed semantic taxonomy. Each category is shown as a node, and the links between categories show is a relationships, like an athlete is a human. Verb categories, like communication verbs and movement verbs, are shown as separate trees. In this graph, categories that are represented similarly in the brain are assigned similar colors. We see that people and communication verbs are represented similarly, and animals are also not so different. Vehicles and buildings and movement verbs are also pretty similar to each other, but different from people and animals. Now we can use this color map to map out how different categories are represented in different parts of the brain. The first step is to collect a high-resolution anatomical image of the brain. Then we use this image to construct a 3D model of the cortical surface. Next, we flatten out the cortical surface onto a two-dimensional sheet so that we can visualize the entire surface at once. Finally, we can color each voxel according to the categories it is selected for. The map you are looking at shows the organization of category selectivity in the brain when the subjects do not perform visual search. The colors are taken directly from the color map we had seen previously. So green is for humans, yellow is for other animals, pink and violet are for vehicles, dark blue is for buildings, and red is for motion. 
What we see is a highly complex pattern of category selectivity across both visual and non-visual parts of the brain. Next, we can look at how these patterns change as we search for specific categories of objects. When the subject searches for humans in the movies, we see dramatic changes in category selectivity widespread across the entire cortex. Specifically, yellow-green voxels that are selective for humans, animals, and body parts predominate the maps in this condition. When the subject searches for vehicles instead, the maps are warped in a similar fashion. Only this time, purple-magenta voxels that are selective for vehicles, structures, and artifacts predominate the maps. These results suggest that focusing our attention on specific categories of objects vastly expands the area of the brain engaged in the search. If you're interested in exploring these exciting datasets yourself, you can use our online interactive brain viewer. With this viewer, you can see inflated and flattened brain maps. You can switch between different visual search tasks to see how brain regions change their selectivity for categories depending on the target. You can also click on each voxel to see the categories it represents during each task. And finally, you can click on each category to see the brain activity patterns it evokes. The viewer is available online at gallantlab.org slash brainviewer slash chukur et al. 2013. If you want to learn more, please read our paper and thanks for listening.